Hey friends, it's Carly from Family Tree Notebooks. Happy President's Day weekend. I have a quick video today because, good news, newspapers.com is opening up their subscription site over the weekend. So even if you don't pay for it, you can access all of their papers, including the publisher extra papers, which are extra on top of your subscription, um, and which are papers that I don't even pay for, so I'm really excited. I just wanted to give you some tips to help you maximize the research that you're doing on newspapers.com this weekend because the site can be a little finicky and since you have limited amount of time, I want you to make the most out of it. And I am here today with eight tips on getting the most out of the free weekend at newspapers.com. Tip number one, you have to have the special link in order to access the, the freebie, the fact that you can use newspapers.com and not pay for it. It is not the same link as the one if you go to newspapers.com and it says try this for seven days for free that's not the same one that link that free trial link um if you haven't used it before i'm not saying that it's not a good link but don't use it this weekend because you don't have to because there's no reason for you to use up your seven day free trial if you don't have to um after the seven day free trial they will charge you unless you remember to cancel it and people have had problems with that in the past so don't use that link what you need to do is you need to find the link that's specifically for the President's Day special. So I'm gonna post that. Um, depending on where you're watching this video, it's either gonna be in the comments, in the video description. Basically, if you're watching my face right now, look around, I've put the link somewhere. That's gonna take you to the correct page and it's going to say, use our site for free over President's Day weekend. Okay, so look for that. Tip number two. All of this ends midnight Mountain Standard Time on the 17th. So Cinderella situation, it turns into a pumpkin, everything goes back to being that you have to pay for it. Get your research done this weekend, don't wait on this. Okay, tip number three. If you're overwhelmed getting on the site because suddenly you're looking at this blank search bar and you're thinking, what am I looking for? I have a bazillion people in my family tree, I don't even know where to start. I would say start with your brick walls. Think about the ancestors where you've gotten stuck, either because you don't have any information on them or you have very limited information, or maybe you have ancestors where you lose them for 20 or 30 years, where basically you have information about them getting married and having a baby a year later, and then the next thing you have is an obituary or a tombstone of them dying in their 60s. A lot of stuff happened in that gap, in the dash, as we say. Um, that's where I would start just because I like to maximize, if I have a new resource, I go straight to my pain points and my pain points are all of those brick walls that I'm having a hard time breaking through. One newspaper article could make a huge difference. It could show you that somebody changed their name, maybe somebody moved and they're not in the place that you've been looking for them. So that's what I would do. If you're starting from absolutely nowhere, think about your brick walls first. Okay, tip number four. In the search bar, use quotation marks when you can to make things more specific. If you're looking for somebody's full name, first and last name, try putting quotation marks to keep the name together or quotation marks around maybe what could be a common phrase but is actually a social club name or a street name or something like that. Newspapers.com has a ton of articles in their database, which is great, but if you're looking for anything, basically you want it to be as specific and narrow down as possible. You can also play with the search fields on the side to narrow it by a state, narrow it by the range of dates where the ancestor would have been alive that you're looking for. Um, you just, you wanna do everything that you can to make your search more specific. Which brings me to tip number five, use unique names whenever you can. So, so if you've got a whole family, who has the weirdest name? that's where you wanna start. If somebody just has a completely bonkers bananas name, that's great, that's what genealogists love because if you find that person living in the town that you're researching, you have a pretty good shot that that's your ancestor. You know, if I find a Joe Smith in Akron, Ohio, that might be my Joe Smith. It could be 280 other Joe Smiths that were living in Akron during his lifetime. So unique names first, um, use them if you got them. Tip number six, don't forget to use nicknames to change spellings. Um, look for misspellings. Look for like C-H-A-S for Charles, W-M for William, because newspapers.com, the articles are not always going to do the thinking for you and know that W-M is the William that you're looking for. So don't forget to do things like that. Also remember that, especially with women, they could be listed under their name 
they could be listed under only like Mrs. and their surname, their married surname, or they could be listed as Mrs. and then their husband's name. So, um, and that's true whether or not their husband has been deceased for 30 years. That's just the way things go. So don't forget to look for things like that. Okay, tip number seven. When you're going to save clippings, there's lots of different options on newspapers.com that tell you, okay, save your clipping this way. You don't want to use the function that says save to ancestry. It is the worst. I don't know why it's so bad. The resolution is horrible. And I've seen articles linked before where you get to the piece of you know newspaper that they're linking to and it's not even the right person. It has nothing to do with who you're talking about. And you realize that it probably saved the wrong part of the page. So then you're trying to go to newspapers.com later to look around and oh, it's just a mess. What you wanna do, okay, let's say you found this clipping, okay, this article on the page. You don't really want the whole page. You mostly just want the clipping and you want to know where and when was this clipping published. Okay, find the clipping hit the print option at the top. So not the save one, the one that says print. It's gonna ask you, do you wanna do the whole page or do you wanna do part of the page? Totally up to you. Most of the time I'm just selecting part of the page because I don't need all of the other stuff unless it's really like a full page thing on my family, which happens sometimes. Or if it's a pretty big article and there's kind of a fun ad next to it or interesting articles that sort of speak to the color of like the paper, the area the paper's covering. Maybe you'll want that stuff. Most of the time I just want the clipping. So I hit print. I hit select part of page. I move the box so that it's over the clipping that I wanna save. And sometimes you have to remember if your article goes to the bottom of the column, column and then starts over, make sure that the box is wide enough so that you are getting the whole article. You don't wanna save half of an article for later. Um, so position your box so it's over the clipping. And then instead of printing, what you're going to do is you're going to save as a JPEG. It will also tell you that you can save it as a PDF. If that's easier for you, that's fine. It sticks the PDF on this letter sized paper and then it's stuck there and you can zoom, but the resolution ends up being really bad. The image is just so much better. What you want to do is you want to get a nice high quality image and then you can put that on your own letter sized piece of paper if you want to. So print, select part of page, save, save as JPEG. Again, print, select part of page, save, save as JPEG. What you're gonna end up with is a JPEG file, an image file, and the image file is automatically gonna be titled. Uh, the file name is going to be the name of the paper and the date um, that that particular issue came out. So the information that you need about, you know, when you're sourcing this clipping that you've saved, it's built into the file name, which I love, it's my favorite. Um, little side note, I like to do this on the desktop. You can do it on your iPad if you're using an iPad. I personally, it's just, it's kind of cumbersome. I like to look at my search results and then open interesting looking articles in new tabs so that I don't have to keep going back and forth from the results to the whatever I'm looking for. And then I save everything to my desktop. I take all of those images, I put them in Google Photos to make sure that I have them saved both to my desktop and to Google Photos. I'll do that like every 20 or 30 images I save, I open up Google Photos and just dump them into a folder that's titled, you know, such and such family newspaper articles. Or sometimes I'll just title it date newspaper.com result and then I'll go into Google Photos later and I'll divide it up and put it in the right family. Um, but that way you have it saved on Google Photos, you have it saved to your computer, and then you can take those images, you can put them in your digital genealogy notebook later, however you wanna do it. Um, I have a couple of pages that are designed for newspaper um, in the Family Tree Notebooks pages. So I have an obituary page, I have one that's just for newspaper articles, and sometimes I just use the blank notes page if it's really like a full page thing and I wanna save as much of the image as possible. If you aren't using my pages, you could still import images using any kind of Word document um, onto letter sized sheets of paper and blow them up or however you want to do it so that you have that information um, saved however you need it. You can also print off images most of the time um, depending on the computer that you're using and stuff like that. If it's one image, the computer usually knows how to get you the best hard copy of that image. So that's why you want the images, not the PDFs. Okay, my last tip, if you are in my position where you're a newspapers.com subscriber but you don't usually pay for publisher extra and this weekend just means that you now have all of these papers that you don't usually have 
when you look at your search results, you can actually tell which ones are the Publisher's Extra or Publisher Extra search results. There's a little symbol by the side. So if you're like me, look for that symbol and just skip straight to those. Don't go through all of the other search results because it's a waste of time if you're already paying for that a normal time. Um, if you are not, if everything on newspapers.com is usually locked up to you and you're just getting search results, don't worry about the symbol. That symbol just means that these certain papers aren't always open to everybody. They are not better papers. It's not like the ones with the little symbol have better information than the ones that are usually included in the basic newspapers.com subscription. It's just the way they're divided. So pay attention to the symbol if you don't usually have access to those specific ones. If you're just looking at everything fresh for the first time, that symbol means nothing. Just don't even worry about it. Okay, guys, that's it for me. I think you're ready to research. I hope that you find amazing things and you really enjoy your President's Day weekend.